Hi, Coop. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I feel a little out of it today for some reason. I wasn't up exceptionally late. Oh, I guess we were up kind of late last night. Playing Barotrona? Playing Barotrona. Living the life of a submarine captain? It was so much more confusing than I was expecting it to be. Well, should we just fuck? Or do you want to fuck after the show? Um, yeah, let's do it after so I can save my energy for the show. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the Iconoblast Podcast. This is the show that takes a look behind the public facades of famous icons to show you why you can never take anything at face value. My name is Cooper, and across from me, as always, is Joel R. Binner. Iconoblast! We put the past on blast! Hit him with the truth, with things you never knew! Nobody is safe, no thing to place! Got Joel and Coop with history in your face! Iconoblast! Presented by GhostBed.com So... I told you a little bit about it last night, and I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of details, but I was contacted by one of our regular listeners, mm-hmm. uh, someone who usually joins us in the chat. I don't want to call them out because I don't know how public they want the information to be. <laughs> um, I'm sure they'll bring it up when they're when they're ready to. But one of our listeners had a very, very, very bad day recently and lost someone close to him. Um, so this episode is dedicated to the memory of John. Cheers to John. Cheers. I also got something else from a listener. Oh, yeah? What do you got? Craigers sent me something that he wanted me to read on air. Okay. Wait, is this because of what Jesse was saying? Because of the conversation we had with Jesse on the show? Which one? Where we should have listeners write things and... And send them in, and then you, and then with whatever whatever it says, you got to read them out loud. As long as yep. there's no end bombs. Yeah, as long as there's no racial slurs, I'll read it. <laughs> so, without further ado, this is our our first listener requested spoken word. <clears throat> Should I be feeling bad? No. Should I be feeling good? No. <laughs> it's kind of sad. I'm the laughing stock of the neighborhood. And you would think that I'd be moving on, moving. But I'm a sucker, like I said. Fucked up in the head. Not. And maybe she just made a mistake, and I should give her a break. My heart will ache either way. Hey, what the hell? What you want me to say? I won't lie. That I can't can't deny. deny. I did it all for the nookie. Come on. (laughs) The nookie. Come on. So you can take that cookie and stick it up your yeah. yeah. Stick it up your yeah. Stick it up your yeah. Stick it up your. There you go, Craigers. I read it. That was beautiful. Did I think he wrote that himself? Yeah, it got me motivated. Yeah, me too. Got me all, yeah. got me all juiced up. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about a very, very, very naughty boy today. Oh yeah, I don't know anything about whatever the fuck we're talking about. Today. I'm I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. Today we are going to be talking about the Marquis de Sade, who was uh, he was a sick fuck. Okay, had a whole lot of crazy sex. Is he French? Uh, yes, yeah, he, he was French. I mean, that ex- honestly explains a lot of his actions. Um, the fucking French, dude. You know how I feel about the French, but you know what a a good place for the Marquis de Sade to do some fucking would be France. Well, do they have ghost beds in France? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> As always, the Iconoblast podcast is brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Ghostbed has been a loyal sponsor of the drinking bros for five years now, and everyone here in the studio absolutely loves them. Ghostbed makes high quality mattresses right here in the good old USA, and each mattress comes with a 20 year warranty. You can try a ghost bed mattress for 101 nights, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can return it, no questions asked. Their mattresses and pillows have cooling technology to keep you cool on those hot, sweaty nights where you're, well, actually, I don't want to, I don't want to mention any of the stuff the marquee did during this ad read or else the sponsors (laughs) might not be happy because pretty much everything that he did was really fucking bad. Ghostbed also offers an adjustable base that's best in class and costs less than the competition. The adjustable base has 15 massage modes, zero gravity, and tons of other great features. Zero gravity, like on Mars. Well, that's low I gotta, gravity. I got to admit, I still need to figure out what the what the zero gravity thing is because did they did they find the god particle? <laughs> did Ghostbed find the graviton? It does feel like no, like you're floating when you when you lay on it. I though. know they're so comfortable. I've I've been getting a sore back 
at night. I mean, partially because I'm old and out of shape, but also because I have a really shitty mattress. I, I think it's time for me to, to upgrade. upgrade to a ghost bed. You can buy a mattress for about $35 a month, and they have no money down, 0% APR financing. Why right. don't you just sleep on the one here? You don't have to go home. Because ah, I always wake up with Georgia you know, sucking on my toes. <laughs> Right now, GhostBed is offering a flash sale where you can get 40% off when you buy a mattress and adjustable base or 30% off of everything when you use the promo code DRINKINBROS. Head over to GhostBed.com forward slash DRINKINBROS to take advantage of all their awesome deals. That is GhostBed.com forward slash DRINKINBROS. GhostBed. Sleep so good, it's scary. Mm-hmm. And it's also a little scary waking up with Papa G looming over you. Mm-hmm. It's happened many times. But I mean, I gotta say, I am a little flattered. You know, it, it's kind of a kind of a boost you, to my. Uh, do you walk funny? No. I always walk funny. It's because I'm so out of shape. Oh. My knees are going bad. I spend all of my day sitting at my computer writing. Well, you're gonna get your dog soon, so. Oh yeah. You'll have to walk. Yeah, at I'm least leaving. That'll be. Because they're crazy, you have to walk them one at a time at first. So that'll be. Four walks a day? Yeah. Minimum? One in the morning, one in the evening? Yeah. For each dog? Ooh, daddy. Until I can walk them both at the same time. Because for the listeners at home, I've got two dogs that have been living out in California, and I have to go pick them up this Sunday because they're about to lose their home that they were living in. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving out to California. I'm going to pick them up and bring them back. One of them is... California. Let's see. So there's Boa... And she's the older of the two. She is half Golden Retriever, and the other half is Black Lab and Boxer, mm-hmm. I believe. She just looks like a Black Lab, but she's got the Golden Retriever face. And the other one is Argus. Retarded. And, oh, yeah, very much. Argus is a fucking idiot. But we love him for it. Well, he's a he's a big, goofy sweetheart. He looks like a scary dog because he's half Mastiff, half Pitbull. He didn't get any of the Pitbull. Nope. No, he's just he's just a huge <laughs> pussy. He's afraid of everything, but not like he's an angel though. No, he is. He's sweet. I I love him to death. I'm I'm looking forward to having him around again because, I mean, honestly, I I think about him pretty much every single day, and I haven't got mm-hmm. to see him in seven months now, almost eight months. The last wow. time I saw him was right before we moved to Texas, so that was last December that I got to see him. So it's been a while. Well, you know, somebody who probably fucked a dog has. That was my attempt at a segue. This French guy. Marquis de Sade, yeah. Marquis is his name? No, his real name is Donatien Alphonse Francois. Donut? Donatien. I'm going to call him Donut. Donatien. Well, people might think you're referring to Donut Operator. I don't know who that is. I know you don't. I love Donut Operator. He inspired me. I'm referring to this French perv. Donato. <laughs> Donatien Alphonse Francois Marquis de Sade. Okay, so Franz? I don't I don't mean to brag, but I was kicked out of two separate French classes in high school, so I'm gonna nail the pronunciation of all this all this French bullshit. <laughs> Why'd you get kicked out? Uh for the same thing both times. I just wasn't I was a real shithead to my teachers in high school. Yeah. Like boy. I I had a major problem with with Head? adults, okay. I have a major problem with people telling me what to do. Um, I need to respect the person to listen to them. I didn't have a lot of respect for most of my teachers in high school, except my English teacher. My English teacher was awesome. One of my English teachers in high school was pretty awesome. But yeah, the French teachers that I had. Well, actually, I got I got kicked out of three different language classes in high school. I started off in French, and the teacher there say something in French. Mailed. I mean, shit. Okay. Uh, cool. The, that's <laughs> all I remember. That's a lot. That's um, a word. The teacher used to say it to me a lot. She'd call me a mm. petite merde. <laughs> you little shit. I, I doubt that's how you actually say you little shit in French, but I don't care. French is a bullshit language. It's not real. No. I, I honestly, uh, have you ever been to France? I haven't. No. I've never seen any evidence that it even exists. Me neither. So, yeah, the first French class I got kicked out of was because I refused to do any of the homework, and any time the teacher would try to punish me, I was just a shithead. She punished you? Oh, yeah. And yeah. she was French? Beat me with a baguette. Uh, and then she called me something that rhymes with baguette, which is pretty insensitive. 
But it was sexual. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you could say so. Was she fingering your butthole when she said it? No, she was using a baguette. Oh, nice. Those things are surprisingly firm. <laughs> so, yeah, I got... No, no, none of them were. I don't think I had... No, were I had... all old? I had old one... Ladies? I had one hot teacher in high school, and her name was formerly Kim Baker... But it is now Kim Johnson because she married Jack Johnson, the the singer songwriter. Um, Jack Johnson was the one who hooked us up with our Warp Tour uh, appearance oh. that my band did. Uh, surprisingly, that guy for the music that he writes now, you would never guess that he used to be like hardcore into the into punk scene, metal. Uh, yeah, and that's how that's, cool. that's how. Uh, so the teacher, Miss Baker, now it's. Mrs. Johnson, but uh, she found out that we were in a band, and she was like, "Oh, the the guy that I'm dating is a musician. I should I should introduce you guys." We were like, "Oh, that's cool. Who is he?" She's like, "Oh, Jack Johnson. Have you heard of him?" We're like, uh, "Yeah, his songs are on the radio every ten fucking minutes because this <laughs> was back in the you know early two thousands." Because he he wrote all Hootie and the Blowfish's songs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, anyway, I it, I got kicked out of two French classes and one Spanish class, so I'm going to nail all this pronunciation. No habla español. So, Donatien Alphonse Francois Marquis de Sade was a French nobleman, philosopher, and writer of notable works such as Philosophy in the Bedroom and 120 Days of Sodom. He also wrote something called like Janus, and uh, he wrote a few other things. He was also such a sick bastard that an entirely new word had to be invented to properly define his sexual proclivities. A sadist. A sadist. He is the... Sadism is named after the Marquis de Sade. No shit. That, that's how fucked up this guy is, is that his his name literally became a word to... to Call a pervert. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, I mean, not... That's pretty I was cool. going to say not all sadists are perverts, but... Uh, I mean, what, what's yeah, the definition of a sadist? A uh, sadist is somebody who likes to uh, inflict pain on somebody else during. Uh, I think just in, uh, I think that's what the what the main use of it is. But I think a sadist is somebody who just kind of likes to gets pleasure from hurting other people. Um, and the opposite of that is a masochist. That's somebody who likes, likes to, to get hurt. Yeah, it's a learning show. We learned a lot just now. So he is responsible for one quarter of BDSM, or is it one third? Is BDSM bondage, sadism, masochism, or is it bondage, something else? And Dildos. Bondage, domination, sadomasochism? Uh, I don't know. Somebody in the live chat, let me know. What, what does BDSM actually stand for? Because I, I certainly don't know. No, no, no. We're not in a sex dungeon right I've now. never looked up any of that stuff. There's not a sex swing in the wide shot. That's why it's cut out. Nope. I don't see one. Nope. Dude, this... we should have somebody in a we should have somebody in the wide shot in a sex swing all the time. Different girl or, or guy every time. You know how much that costs? We could probably do it for like hundred bucks. Sex swing the sex swing itself is a but it's probably a long term investment. Dollars. But then how much do we have to pay the people? You could get someone in for fifty bucks to sit in it for an hour. At fifty dollars a week? Are you fucking kidding me? Who has that kind of money? We could figure it out. Well, we'll see how much our we're we're gonna need sponsor is. We're, we're gonna need like three or four more sponsors to be able to cover that kind of cash. <laughs> Desaad was born on June second, seventeen forty, in Paris to Jean Baptiste Francois Joseph and Marie Eleanor de Maille Mail de to a lady named Marie Eleanor, the young Marie. Marie Eleanor de Male de Carmen. I'm so fucking good at this. The young Marquis was a bit of a problem child, and his father eventually got sick of his shit and abandoned the family. His mother soon grew tired of the crusty socks the, <laughs> the crusty socks de Sade left strewn about the house, and she too <laughs> abandoned her son to join a convent. So his his dad just up and split like his parents. <laughs> Like literally hated him. He was he was a fucking shithead from birth. But I assume that the apple didn't far too fall from the tree. Both of his parents sounded like real pieces of work too. He was jerking off all the time. I oh, think. dude! I think he came out of the womb masturbating. He probably nice. got his mom pregnant on the way out. He was a gross. He was, he was a sick little fuck. 
<laughs> in his parents' absence, Desaad was raised by servants who indulged his every whim, turning the already spoiled brat into even more of an entitled little shit. According to the Marquis himself, quote, It seemed like everything had to be yielded to me, that the entire universe had to flatter my whims. So now we kind of see what, what kind of person we're dealing with here. Yeah. At age 14, Desaad enrolled in an, an elite military academy and graduated at 15 with the rank of sub-lieutenant. And you can see why the French started losing so many fucking wars. They have 15-year-olds that are lieutenants after one year in school. <laughs> By his early 20s, he, I mean, think about that. You have, to, you have to have a learner's permit for like that amount of time to get a driver's license at that age. Well, True. a driver's license at 16, but no, he was, he was a sub-lieutenant. Could he drive yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cars were real big back in, what was that, like 1760? Oh, I didn't know what time this was. <laughs> Actually, no, that, that would have been in the 17, year, yeah, 17, year uh, right about 1755. So he was on a horse. Uh, on a horse, in a horse, <laughs> under a horse. He was a real sick fuck. I, like, I really need to stress that. This guy was fucked up. So like you think he really was fucked up. fucking animals when he was a kid? Dude, I, I think you... So you know how... Uh, the fuck? When we were doing the, the McAfee episode, he was talking about how when you're on bath salts, you will figure out a way to turn literally anything into something that you can fuck or be fucked by. Yeah. Desaad is the original... He didn't need bath salts. McAfee. No, he didn't need bath salts at all. Okay. So he was fucking... Uh, All the time. Okay, so just to play devil's advocate, I do have to say that when he was in secondary school, uh, so between the age of like 10 and, and 14 before he joined the military academy, uh, he was being taught by, um, I think it was like members of the clergy. Mm -hmm. And he actually went to the same secondary school as Robespierre, who was a really major figure in the French Revolution, cut a bunch of people's heads off. We'll do an episode about him at some point because Robespierre was a was another big French piece of shit. <laughs> uh, seems like that's pretty common over there. Um, I don't actually hate French people that much. I like much. French fries. Yeah, French those, rolls. I think those actually came from like Poland. What else is called French? Uh, French bread. French bread. Casual French adultery. Toast. Cowardice. <laughs> it's normal for them to like cheat on each other all the time. Snobbery. Right? Oh yeah, they they think they're hot shit and they and they're they're all cheaters. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's like kind of their their national motto: mm. it's be a shithead and cheat on your significant other. I think they have that printed on their money. Nice. <laughs> and tattooed on their chests. <laughs> but they get hemp tattoos because. The needle's too painful for them. Oh, they have henna tattoos, yeah. <laughs> By his early 20s, Desaad had risen to the rank of colonel and commanded a dragoon regiment in the Seven Years' War. During the war, his superiors described him as deranged but brave. He was probably out there fucking the corpses. Deranged but brave. He was out there fucking the corpses under fire. <laughs> In 1763, Desaad returned home from the war to enjoy his family's vast amount of wealth. Desaad was able to arrange a marriage to a wealthy heiress named Renée Pelagie de Montreal. Oh, I feel bad for her already. You shouldn't, but we're not going to find out about that in this episode, because this, this is going to be a two-parter. The All of part two is just going to be some real kinky shit. <laughs> <laughs> Renée was very loving and dedicated to her new husband, and was more than willing to overlook his many quirks. On the surface, the couple had a healthy relationship that produced two sons and one daughter. Behind the scenes, Desaad was nailing his wife's sister and every prostitute he could find. Fuck. His sex sexapades sex caught up with him mere months after he returned home from the war. So the same year that he returned home from the war, <laughs> within a couple months he got himself thrown in prison by doing some fucked up sex stuff. What was he doing? I will tell you. Tell me. In October of 1763, Saad brought home a prostitute named Jeanne Testard. Here I am going to read an abridged version of the police report following their encounter. So this is an actual uh, tra partial translation of, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't put all of it in. If I put all of it in, it would have been multiple pages. 
But uh, this is a curated version, an abridged version of the police report where I just picked out some of the most fucked up stuff. Okay. He made her go up to a room on the first floor, and having brought down to the ground floor his servant, he locked the door. He first asked her if she had any religion and if she believed in God, in Jesus Christ, and the Virgin, to which she replied that she followed as much as she could the Christian religion in which she had been brought up. Desaad replied with horrible insults and blasphemies, saying that there was no God and that he had manualized himself to the point of pollution in a chalice he had for two hours at his disposal in the chapel. So to, to translate that into more modern day times, he jerked off into a chalice at, at the local church. <laughs> and it took him two hours. Well, I mean, it was probably more than one. Oh, yeah. He probably wanted to fill the, fill the cup. No, he, yeah, he, he probably filled it to the top. He added that he had dealings with a girl with whom he had been in communion, that he had taken two of the hosts and put them in that girl's part that he had seen fleshly. So he took communion wafers (laughs) and stuck them in a girl's hoo-ha. Good for him. And uh, hoo-ha is a a scientific term for a a, ham ham wallet. Ham wallet. Ham wallet. Then. Hee-haw. What's the butthole then? If a hoo-ha is the front, what's the back? Turd cutter. Yee-haw. Hee-haw. Turd cutter. Hoo-ha. Dirt box. Dirt box. Then he proposed to her to go into an adjoining room. This is back to Jeanne Testard. Then he proposed to her to go into an adjoining room, warning her that she was going to see something extraordinary. When she entered, she was amazed to see three Christs of ivory on their cross, two other Christs in print, a Calvary, and a Virgin also in prints. Attached and arranged on the walls with a great number of drawing and prints representing nudities and figures of the greatest indecency. So he had a bunch of religious imagery next to a bunch of smut. Yeah. Nice. Uh, he was real big into blasphemy because when he was in school getting beaten by the, the priests and the nuns and shit, he saw, which first of all, the, the whippings that he got in school, those were so influential in his life that i mean they the the catholic church essentially gave him his kinks uh blasphemy yeah. and and whippings. and uh when he would see the the members of the clergy preaching about purity and He's like, and everything you. else he would also see them falling into the same uh same vices as the the average person. So he was like, wait, you guys are all just full of shit. You're walking around acting like you're all high and mighty, and you're going around fucking prostitutes just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. So he was very, very much into uh, blasphemy. Hardcore atheist. It turned him on to talk shit about it. Yeah. Yeah. And back then, you could actually be put to death for that. So it was dangerous. So it was, yeah. It was not. Yeah, that was probably a, a big part of it, too. It was, it was just it was so exciting. It was so wrong. Yeah. This is bad. I'm being naughty. I'm a bad boy. (laughs) He told her she would have to whip him with the iron swift after having made it reddish in the fire and that he would then whip her with that of the other swifts she would like to choose. So when uh, next to all the religious iconography on the walls, he also had like metal rods and wooden rods and things like that. He wanted her to take an iron rod, heat it up in the fire, and then spank him with it. Nice. That is some fucking... <laughs> that is some fucking kinky shit. Burn his little buns. All right. So that's the that's all I put in of the, the police report. But the affair with Jean... Why was there a police report? Uh, because she went and reported him. She was, she was just going there for a quick little rub and tug, maybe a half and half, something like that. And he ended up having her whip him, and then he whipped her... Oh, so he and whipped her back with he, the Bernie. Bernie. Uh, he made a bunch of blasphemous statements, so she went and reported him to the cops because she's a fucking narc. She doesn't know how to party. The affair was. How, how do you get away with? You're like, so she was like, "Well, I'm a well." I guess prostitution was legal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. That makes it less fun for him. Yeah, that's probably why he had to spice it up with all the blasphemy and and whippings and nudity. And sex toys and uh, poop stuff, but that's episode two. Poop stuff it always ends up with poop stuff with you. 
No, with anybody who's rich. Once you have enough money to have as much sex as you want, it always leads to the butthole. Mm -hmm. You get bored with everything else. The affair with Jeanne Testard led the Marquis to the first of several short imprisonments he would eventually face. Okay. It was only the influence of his mother-in-law that saved him from a much harsher sentence. A contemporary of de Sade's named Jean-Francois de la Barre was put to death for a similar offense. So there were other people at, at the time, during his lifetime, that were put to death for doing what he did, but his wife's family was influential enough saved that him. when this shit would happen, his mother-in-law... Okay, so so get this. His mother-in-law? He was fucking her, probably. No, he wasn't fucking her, but he would tell her, like, he was... Uh, he was already writing. He had developed a passion for writing when he was in in school. He developed a passion for theater and, and writing. So he was writing, like, kinky short stories, and his mother-in-law would read them and be like, Oh, Desaad, you're so bad. <laughs> Write another one. Oh, shit. So she actually... She was a little turned on she by liked, She liked his dirty stories. She wouldn't admit it, but she she liked his dirty stories. So she actually... Was so fond was, of him because uh, he was he was writing like romance fiction, yeah, like really fucking kinky romance. He well, was yeah. he was the original Fifty Shades of Grey author. What the fuck's her name? She, I mean, all all she did was write some goddamn fan fiction. Fifty Shades of Grey started off as Twilight fan fiction. Oh, that's right. I heard about that. What's wrong with that? Um, uh, I mean, I guess nothing. I just don't think that it should be. She's not a good writer. She shouldn't be celebrated as Did a good... Did she, she you watch Fifty Smi- Shades of Grey? No. Coop? No. No, and I definitely didn't watch it with my mom. I didn't. That's weird. It would have been if I did, but Is I that, didn't. You're doing this topic today because you have some confessions you want to make? Uh, D- Desaad <laughs> laid low for a few years before getting in hot water once again on Easter Sunday in 1768. The Marquis picked up a bigger woman named Rose Keller and brought her woman. home for an old fashioned for old fashioned torture sex. Oh, a beggar. Yeah. I think you said a bigger woman. The, like bigger than the last I mean, she, one. She big might, girl. She might have been a big well no, she was poor, so she was probably real skinny, because being fat was something that rich people did back then. Mm. That was a sign of wealth. If yeah. you could if you could get fat. If you could get <laughs> Yeah. Nowadays, it's the opposite. Now, if you're not fat, it's like, oh, they must have enough money to, to stay in shape to to buy decent food. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird? Oh, that swapped. Yep. Yeah, poor people are fat now. It's not their fault, though. Well, you can get when you're poor, and a salad costs eight dollars, and a slice of pizza costs a dollar. You get eight slices of pizza. Well, yeah, you could get one slice of pizza though. No, because one's not enough. You could get... What about your family? Two slices. Of, you could get one slice of pizza for each member of your family. That's what I mean. So you either get one salad that's healthy for yourself, or you get eight slices of pizza and everyone in your house gets fed. That's why you shouldn't have a family. It's true. It is disputed whether she was a prostitute or just a poor woman looking for work, but either way, she followed him to a cottage where the event took place. Yeah. The Marquis demanded she remove her clothes which Keller refused. So that makes me think that she wasn't a prostitute. I, I think she was just, uh, he probably just said like, hey. Hey, you're okay. You need work. I'll, I've got some work you know, for you. I can pay you. Come back to my house and, and clean it for me. Come back to my house and fuck me. But it wasn't anything clean. And clean it. Oh, and clean it. He didn't specify what it was. He meant his butthole. His pipes. His pipes, yeah. He then threatened to kill her and forced her to disrobe. I fuck. Okay, so originally I was trying to like write some some goofy shit, some funny shit into the episode and as I was reading the story I was like, "Wait a second. This is this is just really fucked up." Like yeah. it's, it's not really not really funny. Anyway, <laughs> Desaad then tied Keller. Uh yeah, you sick bastard. I laugh when I get nervous. I wish I had my luchador mask. Luchador mask. Yeah, it'd, it'd make things more comfortable for both of us, I think. I could put on the the uh, gladiator helmet. You might want to put the gladiator helmet on for this next part. Things are going to get naughty. Things are going to get naughty and they're going to stay naughty. Now you can't hurt me. Okay, you've got your gladiator helmet on. Are you feeling are you feeling safe now? 
think so. Okay. Yet another reason to tune in to the Drinking Bros History Channel on YouTube so you can see Joel wearing his Maximus Decimus Meridius helmet. Wait, it would be Maximus Decimus Meridius. Decimus. <laughs> You're going to wear the sunglasses too? <laughs> there you go. Now I feel safe. Perfect. Just <laughs> don't laugh. This is serious. Okay. Desaad then tied Keller to a couch and began flogging her with either a knotted rope or a bundle of rods. Fuck. Some accounts claim he made multiple small incisions in her flesh with a pocket knife and dripped hot wax into them. So the there's some discrepancies in, in Keller's story. Some of this stuff might not be true, but considering <laughs> you, look so <laughs> you look fucking ridiculous right now. <laughs> But in a good but I way. feel safe. I feel safe now. Um, so there are some discrepancies to the story, but I tried to put in the most common, the most accurate parts that I could. Okay. After he grew bored, the Marquis untied Keller and brought her food and ointment for her wounds. He then locked her in an upstairs room and left the cottage. Keller escaped from the room by making a rope out of bed sheets and fled to report the crime to local officials. She went out the window? Yeah, she tied a bunch of bed sheets together and climbed down from the second story of the house. Fuck. Or it was a cottage, I guess, but I don't know what the difference between a cottage and a house is. There are some contradictions present in Keller's story, but regardless of the discrepancies, an arrest warrant was issued for Desaad. Once again, his wife's influential family stepped in and prevented the Marquis from going to trial. A few years later, in 1772, Desaad once again got himself in trouble this time for poisoning a whole bunch of prostitutes. What the hell? The Marquis met Marguerite Costa in her apartment in Marseille. <laughs> <laughs> Joel just dropped his sunglasses. How did people fight in these fucking things? Well, I guess I don't have the strap. That, oh, yeah, that makes it... Makes it a bit more stable? Yeah. Um, I don't believe that people did fight in those because that's a made-up helmet for a movie. I mean, just helmets in general. Oh, yeah, helmets in general. They're I've, a pain in the ass. It seems like it, but it's probably better than getting, getting hit in the head, head with a, with a fucking sword? mace not wearing a helmet. True. The Marquis met Marguerite Costa in her apartment in Marseille. So what happened to the homeless it, lady? They just didn't believe her? Uh, no, they believed her, but... They couldn't but do anything because he's rich. Yeah, his mother-in-law's family stepped in and uh, got his name cleared Son because his mother-in-law was like, if my son-in-law gets locked up, who's going to write all my fucking smut for me? It was a whole kinky family because even his wife, as we'll find out in a later episode, she She's was... She's putting up with it. it. She wasn't just putting up with it. She was getting involved later. Oh. She liked and also it. didn't didn't seem to care that... So his wife didn't seem to care that he was banging her sister. The mother-in-law did care once she found out, but we'll get into that. What kind of wife is this? Sounds like a... Sounds a, like a keeper. A good one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Desaad offered Costa some candies from a crystal box before inviting his servant Latour in to join the fun. After an encounter that included attempted sodomy and other debaucheries, the Marquis paid Costa six francs and left. Soon afterwards, Costa began to feel sick. She spent the following week vomiting and suffering from severe stomach pains. What the? Several other local prostitutes also developed similar symptoms after meeting with the Marquis. Oh, because he's poisoning them. Surprisingly not on purpose. Well, I mean, on purpose, but that wasn't the intended result. Because yeah. the candies Desaad had given them were actually made from a genus of beetle called Cantharis. Some types of Cantharis beetles are poisonous, causing severe nausea and vomiting, other types of cantharis beetles are used to create the aphrodisiac called Spanish fly. Desaad picked the wrong beetle and nearly killed a bunch of prostitutes. So he was trying to, to slip them an aphrodisiac so they would be even... Which, I mean, why would you need an aphrodisiac for a prostitute? You, the aphrodisiac is the, the fucking $5 that you give them. Right. Or six francs. It's the act that's trying to sneak something, right? That's turning them on? Well, I think what it was is when they were clear-headed, they weren't going to want to do the freaky shit that he wanted to do oh. because nobody wanted to do the freaky shit that he wanted to do. So he was trying to slip him, him up. Yeah, just get him a little more, a little more, you know, a little more receptive. 
That's probably a bad way to put it. <laughs> a complaint was filed against Assad and Latour the following day. Both Desaad and Latour were convicted of poisoning and sodomy and sentenced to death. Surprisingly, the sodomy was the more severe of the two crimes. Sodomy is butthole stuff, right? Yeah. Well, sodomy is anything that isn't vaginal intercourse. Hmm. I think, blow eats, I think blow the military, I'm pretty sure that the military, like the uniform code of military justice, still considers blowjobs sodomy. I had a, a drill sergeant tell me a story when I was in basic training that... Uh, because sodomy is is against the UCMJ, so you can you can get in trouble for sodomy if you're in the military. I don't know if the rules have changed since then. I mean, I fucking hope so, or else I'm never rejoining. You get in trouble but for giving bl- blowies. A drill sergeant. I don't know if the story's true or not, or if if they were just trying to scare us into not sucking each other's dicks in basic training. But the drill sergeant it's said good for that, like uh, morale. That's right? like, that's what I said. What's it called? Uh, team building. That's exactly team what building. I said, and I still got in trouble for it. Bullshit. Was your mouth full when you said it? (laughs) (laughs) Team building. (laughs) I can't drink with the helmet on. Uh, That's a good reason to take it off. So the drill sergeant told me the story, or told the whole platoon the story that some officer who lived on base, this was at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, where they filmed In the Army Now with Polly Shore, one of the greatest military films of all time. I love that movie. Me too. Uh, that's actually I, I was it's a, underrated when I found out that I was going to Fort Sill I was actually excited because like oh holy shit that Polly Shore was there uh, where they did the uh, where we first got off the bus um, when we when we first got there because we didn't get there until I think it was like midnight or one o'clock in the morning when the bus finally arrived at the at the base we actually got off the bus at that arch um, that's Mm. That's in the movie. I was too tired to be starstruck. What game they're fucking playing at the beginning of that movie? I wanted to play it literally my whole fucking life. I I don't remember him playing. It's been a long the time intro, since I've seen the it. The intro is just like uh it looks like it's a shot filming an arcade game screen. Like, you know, like the edges of the arcade screen or the edges of the frame and it's like a it's some sort of war game. It's like a tank driving around but there's destructible backgrounds it's a top view it looks 32 bit eight maybe 16 bit and you're driving around in a tank shooting things and blowing things up and it looks like a real fucking game and i've always wanted to play it it might have been either battle tanks no no is it just i've never ever ever no it, it you are the only thing in a tank and you're like going through a little town oh you'd have to that, watch it that sounds really familiar I looked for it, Wait, and like, I played a lot of games, and I, it never came up. You're talking like, about, like, Sega Genesis Super Nintendo era or regular Nintendo? Yeah, it kind of has the same graphic vibe of, like, Metal Slug, but it's a top-down view. I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah, you have to yeah, watch, I, watch the intro to In the Army now, and you'll see the game, because I'd like to play it. I don't remember the game at all. I, I don't remember that intro at all. Yeah, the game has been stuck in my head. I can see the tank going over rubble and, like, shooting and blowing something up, and I was like, oh fucking play that actually pretty much one of the only things that i remember from in the army now aside from uh like it was it wasn't Ed, he a water Edgar boy Alan greer was a water uh, boy yeah yeah they were water boys not the roman type of water boys they were more like oh we learned a lot about the water boys yeah is that yeah we scroll? did yeah the scrolls, scrolls still, still on the Good. the shelves behind me no the main part of that when I think of In the Army now, I think about the the strange crush that I had on Lori Petty, like, all through my childhood. Who's that? That's the babe in it? Yeah, she also played Tank Girl. It was Tank Girl that gave me a crush on her. That movie's so weird, but it's awesome. It's, it, it's, it's nothing. It's unwatchable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was one of my favorite movies growing up, but my favorite movie now is Starship Troopers, so. Makes sense. I, I mean, I'm kind of fucking up my credibility here. I'm supposed to be a smart person. Did you see... That message we got on Iconoblast on Instagram of the movie that Paul Verhoeven was going to make with Arnold? No. Dude. What fuck, is it? Fuck, I wish, I wish it would have happened. It, got, it was so close to getting funded, but like just like problem after problem, kind of like what happened to Neil Blomkamp. After he made RoboCop, he made Total Recall, and then he was trying to get this movie made after Total Recall with Arnold. It was like a crusade film, but the Crusades, and Arnold was going to be the lead and a crusader. 
What the fuck? Yeah, because I mean, back then you had to think you he he did Conan, you know, so he had this he had this vibe like that at the time. He yeah, did Conan, that would... and then he did Conan the Barbarian or Conan the Destroyer. So fuck, they were I like, I'd love fuck, to have seen that. He's perfect to be the Crusader. Yeah, yeah and I mean, and I... Paul Verhoeven, he made fucking RoboCop and and and. Your favorite movie. Starship Troopers. Yeah. That's that's the only Paul Verhoeven movie that I care about now. The Robocop was pretty good. And Wait, Total did he, Recall? Did, oh, yeah. Total Recall was real good, too. Robocop, Total Recall, Starship Troopers. And if he had his way, he would have made some crazy, epic Crusader movie Crusader with Arnold. Movie. That would have been fucking awesome. Yeah. Wait, what else has Verhoeven done besides those? That's it. That, oh, and okay. then he did, like, Rollerball and... Oh, Went wait, the, the new one? Oh, wait, that no, had, that's... like, Chris Pine? Wait, that's the other guy. That's the guy that made Predator and Die Hard, I think. I mixed the two up. Wasn't that Shane... Oh, no, Shane Black wrote Predator. Wrote Predator. He, didn't direct... he, he directed, directed the, the newest new Predator was, movie. Okay. I liked all of the action. I, I mean, I've... This is how it's fucking so, stupid I am because I cheesy. I even liked all of the Alien versus Predator movies. Or I think there's two or, or three now. They're trash, like especially the first one. It's it just so absolute trash. Yeah. But I just like seeing aliens and predators kill each and, other and yeah. stupid action there should have been a whole lot more fucking action in that movie the the first alien versus predator movie it could have been so movie. good is the problem oh like easily freddy versus jason oh freddy versus jason is one of did you know that they were thinking about doing a follow up to freddy versus jason that was going to be freddy versus jason versus ash from army of darkness oh that would be great that would have bruce campbell in a fucking slasher film nothing bad as Ash from Army of Darkness? That would have Nothing been fucking better. amazing. They're coming out with a new Army of Darkness game that I'm looking forward to playing. They're also coming out with a new, uh, a new alien uh, team-based shooter. Yeah, that looks good. We'll be playing that. Yeah, 27th of August, I think. Uh, aliens, the, Fire Team Elite. The Evil Dead game. I am so fucking excited for that one. The Evil the, Dead game, it, it looks like it's well-made, but it looks like it's more like a weekend of fun, and then you're done. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Wait, there was something that I was going to say about the Alien vs. Predator movies, and I, I can't remember what it was now. They could have been so good, because the games were good. Both yeah. both as separate entities were awesome at the time, and then they just made this shitty cash grab. Yeah. Yeah, the first movie, the first Alien vs. Predator movie, is loosely based on the Alien vs. Predator comic, which was also turned into a novel. I I had the novel. Or the, the I had the uh, I think the comic I, book novel. Oh, okay. Um, which is like all the comics put into one yeah. thing. I fucking loved that. Comic. I had no idea because I was never really into comics growing up. They were they were too expensive for my poor family. Um, how, how they were that was because I, my I think that was just a cop out for my parents. That's bullshit because everything was too expensive, and that's why I got comics instead of video games. My friends had video game consoles and shit and. I had comics. I would get... And if I cried enough, I'd get the, uh, you know, the cards with like, X-Men cards. Oh, dude. I had a friend of mine, <laughs> like one of the earliest experiences that I had with gory comics, because uh, before that point, all the comics that I had seen had been, you know, like cheesy Marvel or DC comics. Yeah. But a friend of mine had a bunch of Dark Horse comics. That's actually where I first found out about Alien vs. Predator. Is, uh, he had some Alien vs. Predator comics. And he also had a bunch of Dark Horse trading cards that, like, every single one was just a fucking murder fest. Like, yeah. insanely gory shit. Because Spawn was Dark Horse, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And they did a Batman series on Dark Horse also that was fucking awesome. Didn't or they Dark do, Knight. like, like they, Batman vs. Predator it also? Dark Horse Muse. I talked about this before, the Dark Knight comic series, where it's like Batman and he has this little demon version of himself that, that looks like, it's like the size of Chucky, but in a Batman suit and super creepy. And he's he's killing, you know, criminals, but like in the most fucked up way, like torturing them and like shoving dynamite in their mouth and blowing their heads off. And I don't remember you talking about that. Yeah. I, I don't think I, I've ever even seen it. It's fucking, I remember reading it as a kid and I was like, fuck, this little Batman is crazy. And then like normal Batman is just trying to get him to like put him back on a leash. And little baby Batman is running around killing everybody. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I never heard of that. The uh, I remember in my, my hometown of Burns, Oregon, super small, shitty town out in the middle of nowhere in, in southeast Oregon, um, we didn't have any... 
like franchise stores or any store chains. All of the stores in town. No were, comic book stores. Oh no, there. I doubt there's a comic book store there now. Uh, surprisingly, there is a weed store there, which is yeah. owned and operated by my uncle and my cousin, <laughs> both of whom spent my entire fucking childhood telling me how horrible weed was. And then as soon as they legalize it in Oregon, they're like, oh, that's a good way to make money. They start growing and selling weed, and they own the only weed store in in Burns, Oregon. Nice. Fucking hypocrites. I mean, I remember so many goddamn conversations with my uncle who was telling me he would call it the the loco weed. So, oh, you don't want to be smoking that loco weed. That'll (laughs) make you stupid and makes you do dumb things. Just opens up a weed store. I remember. That's why kids at home, never listen to your fucking elders. They're all stupid. Well, they were right, and then they were right again, right? Wait, what were what were they right about? Trying to keep you away from drugs. That obviously didn't work. Yeah, and then but once it was legal, they're like, okay, well, tr- this drug is good, like like alcohol is. I still don't understand how alcohol is more legal than than weed is. Dude, I remember in high school, I would I would uh, skate or ride my bike all the way to this hobby store. I had to. Pl- I didn't even have a cell phone, so I would plan it ahead of time with my mom and say, "Pick me up when you get off work at the hobby shop." And it was like this weird mixture. It had like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons bullshit. It had comics, hobby stuff. All it was like a, all that nerdy shit was all in one place. And I would skate there or ride my bike there in high school, and then just hang out there all day, and read the comics for free, like sit there and just read comics. And then I would. She would buy me like a deck of cards, like comic book cards, or a comic. And they were like $2 at the time, $3. What was my fucking parents' excuse? (laughs) I could have been reading comics this whole fucking time. Instead, I got like, I got one, uh, I had a Sega Genesis growing up, and I would get one game on my birthday. And then one game when we secretly celebrated Christmas because we had to celebrate it in secret because we were apparently part of a Christian cult. (laughs) We should do an episode on that cult. Oh, we should. It's called the Worldwide Church of God, and we were we were members of it for the entire time that that my dad was alive. (laughs) That's fucking. Uh, We were we were way out on the fringe with those, so we weren't part of the the real fucked up weird shit. But the the Worldwide Church of God is it's still around. I think they rebranded to something else. Um, the Worldwide Church of God. But that's actually the reason that I got a Sega Genesis is because we went to Eugene, Oregon. Uh, once a year, we would go to Eugene, Oregon for a week for uh, what they called the Feast of Tabernacles. And during the Feast of Tabernacles, up until... Uh, so it was against the rules of the church to celebrate Christmas. Uh, there, Surprisingly, there was a lot... Uh, the church had a lot in common with Judaism and was Judaism. Jeho- Jehovah's Witnesses because we weren't allowed to, there was a bunch of holidays that we weren't allowed to celebrate. We couldn't celebrate Halloween. We couldn't celebrate Christmas. We couldn't celebrate Easter. Any of the main Christian holidays, uh, we weren't allowed to celebrate. We had our own Christian holidays that we would celebrate. What which were they called? Just pretty much just the Feast of Tabernacles. It was like a one week. Tabernacle. What's a tabernacle? I don't know. You don't? Something. No. I mean, it's probably something I should know, but yeah, I, I'm not sure what a tabernacle is, but we had a feast of them. There's a song on a Snoop Dogg album where at the very end they say something like, touch, preach, tabernacle, touch, preach, tabernacle. And I thought he was saying pterodactyl the whole time. <laughs> so yeah, once a year we would have the Feast of Pterodactyls. <laughs> and it was one week that we would spend in Eugene, Oregon, and there would be people from all over the country. That Around would, the world hunting pterodactyl. Yeah. And, and bringing their pterodactyl. And pets. that's why there's no pterodactyls anymore, because <laughs> the Worldwide Church of God hunted them to extinction. <laughs> yeah. There's blood on my hands, Joel, and I'm not proud of it. You killed the pterodactyl? I had to, or else I would be excommunicated. Uh, but yeah, during this one week festival, I mean, it wasn't even a festival because like my parents had to go out of their way to make it fun because all it was, was, was there French guys at this, in this cult? Oh God, I fucking hope not. There probably was. Jesus Christ. Cults Don't... usually you're doing sexy stuff. This is the first the time I've, I've ever felt guilty for being in a cult. I feel dirty. Cults are, there's a lot of cults that are beneficial, you know? 
I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> uh, I've never heard of a beneficial cult before. Well, it d- depends on, I guess, your definition of a cult, I guess. I guess it depends on your definition of beneficial. True. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, like I was saying, they would they would have this this week-long festival in Eugene, Oregon, where people would members of the church would come from all over the place. There would be uh, a huge auditorium just completely packed with with people and we would hear the the leader of the church speak. It was never in person. Did it he was have an accent? A video? No. It wasn't in person. No, it was a uh, like recorded on a yeah, projected on, on a, tube a TV? projected no, projected Projector. on a video oh. on a video screen. They wow. well, they were making a lot of money because every we went to church every Saturday. We didn't go on Sundays. We celebrated the Sabbath on Saturdays, and I wouldn't call it celebrating because I fucking hated Saturdays because that meant that we had to spend 2 hours in the car driving over to Bend, Oregon to go to the church because there wasn't a church in our town. Well, there was a church, but it was one of the the pagan Catholic churches because it uh, the Worldwide Church of God had a pretty big problem with Catholicism and just seems like Christianity in general. But yeah, we'd we'd go to this feast and it wasn't even a feast. There was never any fucking food. They would hand out cookies and I would always think like, wait, this is supposed to be the Feast of what Tabernacles. Kind of, what but kind of cookies? The iced oatmeal Wheat? cookies. Oh no, everything, Druggy? anything, Druggy. anything that was fun was against the rules in that church uh, outside of the, the church elders who were apparently fucking uh, everybody. Yeah. Fucking a lot of people. Did you get fucked? No, hmm. no. And see, that's the other, I had no fun being a part of that church. I you couldn't celebrate gold, Christmas, maybe couldn't celebrate Halloween, couldn't celebrate Easter. And I never got fucked. It was like Damn. all the worst parts of, of every fucking religion rolled into one. Wasted and all my Saturdays growing fucked? up. No. Nope. Damn. Or I just wasn't a very attractive kid. Which... Was there some babes, though? Do you remember at the feast, like, seeing cute girls? Boys? From what I recall, there aren't any attractive women in Oregon. I've never seen one. Yeah. Um, I, I think that anyone who is born in Oregon who grows up to be attractive moves to either California or Washington. You know why you didn't get fucked? You had your mustache. Everyone just thought you were an adult. Oh, and they were only going after the... Yeah, that, no, that makes sense. They were only going after the kids. They did share one thing in common with Catholicism. Loved fucking those little boys. Really, though? Yeah. You know who else loved fucking little boys was the Marquis de Sade. I don't know if you ever donut. actually fucked any little boys. Oh, okay. Uh, see, I thought you were referring to Donut Operator again, and I, I, was, don't know I was about to, to jump to his defense. Donut Operator's an angel. I finally found out his real name the other day because I follow Jack Mandeville on, on Instagram mm-hmm. um, and sometimes after hours at work whenever he's in town. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not going to say his real name on air because he never uses his real name uh, whenever he does his you're stalking, YouTube videos. You're stalking mm-hmm. Donut Operator? No, Jack Mandeville. If, you're if, stalking both of them. If, if I could, I would totally stalk Donut Operator, but he's all the way out in San Antonio. I'm not going to drive that That's far. Jack up. comes out here. Good cover up. So going back to Marquis de Sade, I was going to do a, a good segue there, but I just lost it, so I'm just going to go for it. You don't have good segues yet. It'll come. No, I, I get like one or two good ones here and there. In time. A complaint was filed against de Sade and Latour the following day. Both de Sade and Latour were convicted of poisoning and sodomy and sentenced to death. The Marquis was to be decapitated by guillotine, and Latour was to be hanged at the gallows. Then both bodies were going to be burned and the ashes scattered to the wind. Nice. Unfortunately for the Marquis, his mother-in-law wasn't around to save him this time. <gasps> she had learned of his affair with his sister-in-law and refused to help him ever again. And she actually cut him off for, for the rest of his life. She never never helped him out, never interacted Shit. with him. He became a black sheep finally, which he should have been a black sheep in the family before that because he was a sick fuck. Well, I mean, is it that sick to slap a prostitute in the ass with a with a hot stick and have and make a bunch, make, make a bunch of small incisions on her body and drip hot wax oh that was the that was the bigger i forgot about that yeah, yeah no that uh, small incisions no that was uh hot wax is fun that well it depends on the type of wax so uh some of the discrepancies in that story are the type of wax that he used which if he used beeswax beeswax has a much lower melting point and it wouldn't have been painful at all. But there was also a type of red wax that they used that was made from something else. It wasn't beeswax. And it had a much, much higher melting point, And that would have actually left burns. Burns. So she initially first claimed... Degree, second degree? Yeah, probably, yeah. First, maybe, Fine. maybe second. Well, I mean, if he's making incisions and then dropping yeah, wax into him... that's gross. Yeah. That's what he was doing? 
Yeah. That's gross. That, that's, that's pushing it too far. <laughs> that, that's taking it too far. Yeah, a little, a little. So there were discrepancies about the type of wax that he used. If he used beeswax, it's like, ah, eh, who hasn't fucking cut up a prostitute with a pocket knife and dumped beeswax on her? If it's a red wax. Okay, now you're you're going just too far. Yeah, that's. But she wasn't a, a prostitute, right? She was a homeless person. Oh yeah, she was a. a bigger woman because she did seem okay, to be so surprised then she's worth a her. little bit less than a prostitute then so yeah i could see cutting her yeah times were different back then they had <laughs> they had uh no I'm kidding. they had different I'm kidding. morals cutting her or the wax the wax oh yeah okay that that makes it. the red wax not the beeswax if it was beeswax it'd be fine if it was be if, no if it was beeswax it'd be boring luckily for Desaad and latour they were able to flee to italy before being executed the Marquis brought along the love of his life, his sister-in-law, to keep him company while he was away. <laughs> so fled to Italy, took his sister-in-law, didn't Who take his wife. wife. Yeah, his, his wife stayed behind in France. Without anyone to decapitate or hang, effigies were made of Desaad and Latour, and those were executed instead. The men were later arrested and held in the fortress of Milan's. Wait, who was? Uh, Wait, what's happening right now? They, he, so they were. He got away. They were sentenced to death, but they escaped. How did he escape? Do we know? And, well, they he split and went to Italy before the arrest warrant was issued. How did but he then, know, but it, so he knew it was coming and got the fuck out of there. Or he he might have just been like, hey, let's go to Italy and and just good timing. Fuck some Italian prostitutes. So yeah, he fled to Italy. Also, the the timeline for this section was kind of hard to put together because he left and went to Italy, a trial was held while he wasn't there, and they were uh, sentenced to death in absentia. So they were sentenced absentia. without without actually standing trial. And then the execution was held where they made straw effigies of Desaad and Latour, and they executed those instead. But then when Desaad returned from Italy, he was arrested. Him and Latour were both arrested, and they were thrown into the, the fortress of M Milans, uh, M-I-O-L-A-N-S. Um, okay. And they ended up being held there for four months. It, it confuses me because, so they were held there for four months and they were somehow able to escape. I wasn't able to find information on how they escaped, if it was like some sort of caper or if, if they were just like, hey, I'm rich, here's some money. Let me out. And let, let me out and I can give you a bunch of money. Yeah, and then, then they got out that way. Or the guard was like, God damn it, you're jerking off on everything. No. <laughs> get the fuck out now, of see, here. See, what what I like to think is Desaad was in there and he's like, I bet I could fuck the lock on this jail cell. <laughs> Started picked, fucking he it. He picked the lock with his dick. Didn't even mean to. He just saw a hole. He's like, I bet my dick will fit in that. Stuck his dick in there, was jiggling it around. The door came open. He was like, oh, shit. All right, let's go. Okay, let's get out of here. Uh, or he had a love affair with one of the guards, and the guard was I just think... like, I can't let you die. I cannot let you, you die. You taught me things. <laughs> you, opened, you taught me so much. You opened my eyes. You opened me up. And then peed in them. So, yeah, they they went to the fortress of Milan, <laughs> Milan's. He, everything he taught the guard, the guard was, like, so excited to go yeah. home to his wife to show his wife the new tricks he learned. It's funny because the whole time that I was – <laughs> the whole time that I was writing this, I just kept picturing that every single sticky situation, I, no pun intended, but every single sticky situation that the Marquis got into. He fucked his way out of it. He somehow figured out a way to get out of it by fucking something. Yep. Picking locks, fucking doing, doing he little. He filled the lock with semen. Doing puppets. Puppets? Cock puppetry. <gasps> mm. Like mm -hmm. sock puppet stuff? Yep. With his cock? Similar to a sock puppet, but it's a cock puppet. Okay, wait a minute. We got to talk about this. For a second. What, are you, what are you talking about, cock puppets? You've never seen puppetry of the penis? No. Penile puppetry? No. Really? You'd... Penile puppetry? Joe, I am, I am fucking shocked. You, you take your dick and you make it look like a brontosaurus or, or a worm or a hamburger. Hamburger? Yeah, you shove your dick down between your balls and squeeze your scrotum around your dick, and the dick looks like the Hot the dog. meat. And the, well, it can look like a hamburger also. What does your dick look like? Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've had a very rough life. All right. Yeah, there, we're gonna dig into this cult you were in. Something <laughs> happened to your penis. We were we were among the the more favored families, so. 
they only do they didn't fuck you, you they just turned your penis into a hamburger no i i did that myself that was part of our our weekly initiation our weekly cleansing where we had to <laughs> we had to flagellate ourselves directly on the penis only the men the the women were whipped on the buttocks Without anyone to decapitate or hang, effigies were made of Desaad and Latour, and those were executed instead. The men were later arrested and held in the fortress of Milan's, but were able to escape after four months, which, as I said, I'm pretty sure fuck Desaad the fucked the lock on the, fuck on the, the jail lock, cell. Fuck the guard. Fuck, and, yeah, fuck fuck the guard. Yeah, I mean, he was fucking everything on the way out of that, that fortress. I'm surprised that he actually made it out of there. He fucked a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked the wall until it made a tunnel <laughs> to escape. He used his dick as a like a... Chisel. He was like Andy Dufresne, except in, instead of a, a, what was that, a rock hammer? Or what did what did he get from Red? Yeah. So rock hammer or something yeah, like rock that? Yeah, rock hammer. Yeah, he was just fucking grinding up against the wall the whole time and bath eventually salts. created a hole. Bath salts get you there. Bath salts are wild fucking drugs, man. Desaad rejoined his wife in France, and that's when the two started to get really freaky. He made it back to his wife. Which is where we're going to pick up in the next episode. He goes back to his wife. She's still waiting for him, but she has some new tricks now. Yeah, maybe. I mean, she... To be his, a good wife to her husband, his she's going to have to play the game. His wife seemed kind of boring in the beginning. She was just overlooking all the weird shit that he just was doing. Kind of, uh, yeah, being... But... She knew it was happening, but she once, was letting it happen. Yeah, once he went back to France, he was in a... Uh, he was living in a castle called Chateau, Le, uh, Chateau Lacoste, I think, or Chateau de Lacoste. And once he got back to France, he was just like, well, fuck it. Obviously, I I keep getting in trouble for this stuff, but nothing ever sticks, so I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. And that's what he started doing, just started holding full-blown orgies uh, mm. at his castle. And his wife was a willing participant and uh, apparently seemed to enjoy it. That sounds like, that sounds like fun. He had a castle? Yeah. Chateau Lacoste. How did he get a castle after all this? He was a he was a marquee. He was born rich. He he, so he inherited still had all the money. Yeah. He didn't need that. He didn't. Need he was them. he um, was nobility pretty much, um, which it makes he it. He had an orgy castle, like in the oh, like, yeah. like at the end of Conan the Barbarian. I don't know if you could really call of it call it an orgy castle. It was more of like a rape dungeon. I mean, it was a castle still, but it wasn't. Were the people there not willing? Some were. Some weren't. Middle mixture. That yeah, the rich people were willing. The poor people were there to to make to, a buck. To, well, it's the way it is. It's the oldest profession on earth. He had a castle, and he was having orgies. And you're just gonna end it like that? It was just about to get good. It's called a cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. It's a good movie. It should have <laughs> starred me. <laughs> but didn't that was Stallone? That's what I'm saying. It should have been me. Oh, I thought you said it starred me. They're making a new one. A new cliffhanger? Well, they've, there's... Uh, Stallone's been hinting at it in his Instagram posts about either a remake or a sequel. What is it, him bravely climbing out of the shower without using the shower handles? <laughs> it's something like that, yeah. Is him climbing the stairs to the second floor of well, his house? If you watch the first one, he I think he'll play the role of like the helicopter pilot guy. That doesn't seem very exciting. Well, whoever's the his son or whatever the drama is will be cool. And then, you know, it's Stallone, I'm, so I'm he'll be like, gonna I'm still going to fucking watch it. it. <laughs> He's going to climb one more time. <laughs> He's going to climb one last still time. Still got a little something yeah. left in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of basements, do you want to get out of this basement? Sure. Let's get out of here. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. That was that was good enough. We'll, uh, we'll be back next time. Well... So originally we were uh, we were trying to to do part two of John McAfee, but oh yeah, it's still uh, gonna happen. John McAfee, uh, it's still gonna happen. We but just... Jesse wasn't available this week. I'm gonna be out of town next week because I have to go pick up those dogs, which mm-hmm. is gonna be a hell of a trip. Oh, this is basically my birthday episode because my birthday's tomorrow. Oh, shit! Now you well tomorrow if if this when this comes oh, out it'll be okay. the. the tomorrow so my birthday is tomorrow well happy birthday i don't have any drinks left to cheer here i'll cheers you with water okay cheers i've got vodka cheers happy birthday i already took you to alamo draft house and bought you a yes, video you, game yeah you did you did buy me a video game we went and you. saw terminator 2 together mm-hmm. on the big screen for the first time ever it was fucking awesome yeah it was really fucking awesome dude that movie still holds up i can't believe how well it holds up and even in 4k in the cgi still look good like yeah it, it's real simple, like the liquid metal bullshit is real simple, but I think that was on purpose. That was, 
using CGI smartly mixed with the the puppetry that they were doing. Well, I also don't think that they had access to anything that much more advanced back then. But he was also using that, like, it, if you watch The Abyss, it's the same. The liquid Metal, it's the same. Whatever, like, system or whatever uh, VFX were in The Abyss, he used that same shit with the T-1000. They, it almost looks th- like when the little yeah. thing floats in and, and looks at her and then floats away, it looks like the T-1000. Actually, yeah, that is really similar. Yeah, so he has... He had that shit mastered. That's why it looks so good. All right, that's it for this episode of the Iconoblast podcast. Be sure to check out the Drinking Bros History YouTube channel if you want to join us for our Monday night premieres every yeah, Monday dude, night we're almost at 9 to 1, Central Standard Time. Yeah, the, the Drinking Bros History channel is almost to 1,000 subscribers, which can make it so we can monetize the channel and start making some money. Yeah, we can do uh, super chats during the, the live chats with the premieres. That um, and also uh, little commercials and shit we'll play during our videos and... All that shit can unlock. So now our videos are going to be interrupted by commercials? Only app, not during the premiere, only oh, after. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. <laughs> um, also, anybody who is using Apple Podcasts, don't forget to subscribe, Please. rate, and review. We're trying to get ourselves back up on the charts again just to... We need more reviews on there, and we'll repost them. Just to make we'll us feel them. good about ourselves. We'll post them on our Instagram. Yeah, best reviews that we see on on Apple Podcasts, we will post on Instagram so everybody can enjoy your, your, your beautiful comments. writing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah that's it for this episode join us again next week where it's either going to be John McAfee or we will continue Marky Desaad depending on mm-hmm. what Jesse's schedule is yep I have been Matt Cooper how long have you been Matt Cooper uh, 37 years now nice that's no. awesome no, I have been, been Joel Benner for a few years that's right I was Joel <clears throat> and Joel <clears throat> before that yeah yeah we don't we don't need to move to another state again to deal with your <laughs> witness protection bullshit <laughs> anyway uh that's us reminding you to never take anything at face value yeah that's us number one and number two poop and pee <laughs> coop and me <laughs> goodbye
just 